come no, out Kenya to always, That's why when you put out all this information, like now the, the case of Anwai Guru, what, what did people do? It was the media. And even when she did, she, she did uh, the interview later, it was that all her pre press people were saying that the media is hounding her. The media, it was always the media. That the is media how was being press accused. People see. See. Yeah, it was the media. Who, what do you expect? And you, the media, media. Some of you guys were the media. Uh, you uh, see, uh, really? Why do you expect? <laughs> my the right. media was uh, seen to have. Let, let, let me hear from yes. Mojito. Let's yes. hear from yeah. Mojito. Thank you, Mike. And we are running away from the fact one judge is accused of bribery. There were, it was a seven ju uh, bench, bench judge. judge. Judge, uh, I mean, seven, a seven judge, judge bench. bench yeah. uh, Actually, where, three. Where, uh, no, get your facts right. <laughs> get your facts right. It was a seven. No, I'm saying they were once accused of, 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 yes. of the case. I mean, I, 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 I've only had one judge to there's know. There's an allusion to the two women. Uh, that that okay, sorry. Finish. sorry. Allow him to I've finish. only had one judge saying <laughs> those are fictitious allegations, and that is justice to know. Mm -hmm. Even the Chief Justice, who himself ordered these investigations, has not said, has not clarified whether he may have been induced or not. We need <laughs> clarity from the public officers. They yes. owe Kenyans an explanation. I expect Jackson Bomojua, I expect Joe Kindumu, I expect all the honorable justices that sit on that seven judgment Kalpana Rawal mm. to decide, to tell us what could have happened and whether they are clean or not. These are part of the stories that we need to tell about this institution. Okay. So after all, you agree that you haven't told the story? You know, it's running, so you can't tell those stories. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's why I keep on yeah, telling yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I want to move on yeah, to something else because time is not on our side. And there was, uh, on Monday, there was an article, Press Freedom in East Africa and a greater threat than ever, says Rights Group. This was uh, Article 19 reporter uh, without borders and a committee th um, for protection of journalists uh, saying that uh, Kenya is ranked as the worst in terms of press freedom. And I'll come to you, uh, Crispus, on your take on this article. I hope you had a look at it and uh, whether you feel this is a true re reflection of where we are in terms of journalism in East Africa. Well, first of all, I think I want to admit that uh, it is a story that I haven't looked at. Actually, what I looked at uh, was um, another one issued by Transparency International. About um, corruption. About corruption. Mm -hmm. That I haven't looked at at uh, with a critical eye but i think i want to say this i think i'm still confident that in this country compared to other countries in the east african region we're still ahead despite uh, uh, the pressure that is seemingly coming from uh, certain quarters uh, trying to muzzle the media i think we still have a great uh, a great responsibility as a media uh, in the country and uh, we need to seize uh, this opportunity and try to fight for our space Okay, without comparing, do you think we're doing well? Because sometimes we compare ourselves with the worst. I think we are doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty yeah. much, I think we are doing well. Okay, Gadara? Um, uh, this has to be seen again as part of a slew of reports that have come out that um, uh, all of them pretty much are like the same thing. That uh, the space for media to operate in is shrinking. We, we had it from a uh, committee to protect journalists, we had it from Human Rights Watch, and now from Article 19. You know? Um, and I think it is very reflective of the truth. We have seen um, not just physical violence um, uh, on journalists, but also uh, arrests, you know, um, and all of them on very dubious grounds, you know, and it pretty much seems to be the content of the reporting, you know, that's, that's at issue. And uh, even worse, we have seen the government essentially flout the law um, uh, declare certain things, um, like for example the publication of pictures of dead uh, KDF soldiers, which are not illegal, but try to declare that it, it can decide what is and what is not acceptable in a newspaper. So I think uh, the, 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 the report is broadly correct when it, it, it says the, the, the space for media is shrinking. All right, uh, David Ohito, do you feel that this is uh, true given uh, some of this? What oh, the report one last says? thing, one last thing. Um, uh, also, the media has been quite complicit in its own uh, uh, clamping <laughs> down. That, you know. yeah. We'll also remember what, when I mean, you say what happened. With how? how? I yeah. mean, uh, you remember the case of Galava in the nation? You know, uh, also in the Standard, the guys who reported on uh, the supposed uh, uh, cabinet. Um, retreat at uh, Mount Kenya Safari Club, who apparently got fired. 
you know, again, all at the instigation of the state. So we have to be... What, what would you have had the media do in those cases? Well, here's the thing. is these are, these are decisions that... I mean, I think uh, in the case of Galava, for example, also he said, if he had written something on the tea industry, you know, <laughs> um, uh, it's very unlikely he'd be unemployed today. You know, the fact is the reason he was fired is because... State House took exception to what he had written. You know, he himself says he was informed beforehand by somebody from State House, not from Nation. <laughs> okay, so Michael, if you may, so if those are let, let, also, eh? yeah. let me first of all hear from Monito <laughs> regarding this. this these guys hold a lot of theories. I like getting to the facts. <laughs> the space has been diminished or decimated over time since 2013 when we had a new regime coming into Kenya. And how it has been done has been very systematic. The executive has been working with legislature, which has, it has majority in support of. So what they do is to continually bring in laws that try to stifle media freedom. And there have been four laws, which I told you. There's the Media Act, there's the Kicker Act, there's security laws. And now there's the parliamentary powers and privileges, which we protested. It's back to the MPs. It uh, should be going to the Senate now. Those are clear-cut examples with clauses that directly targeted media. Having said that, there has been a lot of censorship on behalf of journalists because they want to keep their jobs. If you stick out your neck the way my good friend Kalava did, you will face the axe. So what is happening is that, that that freedom may not manifest in a journalist trying to do a story, but the fear of re reprisals has made journalists say, let me go to the safer end, and we leave it there. I've been asking, and I kept asking Gadara, why didn't we have the robust Kenyan media just going to El Ade up to today, about three, four weeks after the attack, just to try and find out what really happened. And part of the information, I would say this without fear or favor, the information I have about El Ade attack, I have only published 30 or 40 percent. Because sometimes you say the nation is more important than the media house, <laughs> and the nation is more important than one When individual. you say you've published 30 or 40 percent, what's restricting you from publishing the rest? One, there are very serious security implications for us as a mm. nation. So is that out of responsible journalism or fear of the state? No, responsible journalism. Okay. Uh, I had donated my life for them if they wanted to <laughs> take it. I really, uh, uh, and I've prepared my family for this. I keep on trying to counsel them that <laughs> when the truth comes, we shall say it. And they know I have the truth, and which is why I think I had one of the best El Ade stories ever published in this country. Okay. Uh, Clay? Oh, Gadara. Media space reducing <laughs> and uh, what... Yeah, actually, okay, fine. Uh, it's it's true. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of the media is getting a, a lot of bashing, and that's exactly what I was talking about. I mean, I w probably you guys are calling it a bigger name, and that's probably what is bashing. I'm um, maybe making it trivializing it, but uh, we're getting a lot of that from ex actually all quarters, and sometimes including people like Gadara, who actually will leave this place and walk into a media house. Yeah to work. He's going to report to a media house to work. Um, yes, I do agree that uh, the media has been, you said, complicit to yes. some extent. Because what is happening is that for a very long time, we've not had very strong professional media bodies. We've not had that. And uh, that's why when Ohit, I, I used to tell Ohit, I, I used to call it editor's guilt. I still call it that because to me, it is just there. It is, it is just there like, okay, fine, we need some entity. But I don't know what they do for me. And then we have Kenya Union of Journalists, which to me is not a professional body, but is a trade union. Mm -hmm. So for a very long time, we have not come together as Kenyan journalists or as reporters or as a media to form a strong professional body, whereby if maybe one of us is, we feel like, no, that is not proper treatment, we, we can use this body to stand up for one of us. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. So in a way, yes, we've been complicit. And uh, I, I have been making this noise because some of, the, some of the measures that I think we should take as a media house to make us that strong, they probably most of us will find them a little bit too radical. Because for me, my background is I came, I did my internship and I studied journalism in a country where 
what the media says is actually bigger than the law. Mm. So you have to, if you, if you want your government to survive, you have to understand, actually, you have to listen okay. to the media. Mm -hmm. So I think, yes, we've been complicit. We are trying. Then there's the other thing that uh, Jan can say, just a minute, about, about I mean, oh, you know, compared to Uganda, compared to Tanzania, com to compared to this. Why do Kenyans always like comparing themselves with the worst? I don't live in Tanzania. I, I live here. Don't tell me that we are better than Tanzania. I live here. I mean, why? Kenyans like comparing <laughs> themselves with the worst so much okay. as if it is wrong to be the best. Mm. Yeah. All right, Crispus, <laughs> closing comments and uh, possibly what we need to do to ensure that that media space is not shrinking even further. I Very think briefly. right now, uh, but briefly, I want to respond to the issues that uh, Galara raised as far as uh, uh, the Galava issue is concerned. I think uh, I would say that none of us is competent enough to discuss that uh, matter substantively because we don't know the issues, what other underlying issues were there that led to his firing. But uh, we wish him all the best. Uh, but uh, as far as my closing remarks are concerned, I think it is incumbent upon all of us to fight for our space, whether it is Kenyans, whether it is actually the media, because uh, it is only by fighting that we can find our space within a democratic society. Okay, in two seconds, uh, Gadara. Well, uh, in two seconds, um, I would say the, uh, uh, I find it weird that um, people like Clay um, <laughs> sort of deride what I say and then come out and agree with it. You know, um, the media itself has got to practice what it preaches. If it wants freedom, it's got to utilize that freedom not to hold uh, the people in power to account. You know, um, uh, it cannot be that people are scared within media houses to write stories because they might be fired. You know, to express opinions because they might be fired. And then the media goes and complains the state is doing the same thing to them. Okay. Uh, Ohito? We need proper laws that will uh, protect the practice of journalism, the freedom of access to information, and freedom of journalists to practice must be respected. And to this end, I say the faster we pass the access to information bill, the uh, faster we dispense of the cases that media and media practitioners challenged uh, before court, we're still going to be in a lot of problems. Uh, our job is going to be more difficult going into the last 16, 17 months to the election. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll have to wind it up right there because of time. And uh, our panel this morning, Patrick Gadara, communications expert, Chris Young Kem, who is a media commentator and also specialist. Uh, thank you for joining us. We have uh, David Ohito, who is a digital editor with The Standard, and Clay Muganda, also an editor with The Standard. That's where we're going to wind up our newsroom this morning. Thank you for your comments. Unfortunately, because of time, I may not be able to read uh, through them, but we do appreciate that you participating in the conversation and also your sentiments and uh